Could we throw the second to the last song that she did up there? It was the one about go up to the mountains and bring down your... This is all scripture. It really has a lot to it, actually, because it has what's true in Christ and it has what's us trying to produce it in the earth and then it has us bringing the reality of what's settled and done into living form within his body. But it starts with us and our ways, our trying to do it, you know, You've planted much, but have little to show. You eat and drink, but you're never full. You clothe yourselves, yet you shiver still. You earn a wage, but from your purse it spills. And so this is our efforts, and this is our doing, and this is our Christianity, and this is our, our thoughts of how we're um, glorifying God. You know, we think it's in gain, and we think it's in having and we think it's in doing and and then you walk around in your panel homes while my house lies in ruin well his house is settled if you will in heavenly places or more clearly settled in him but more passionately settled in his heart above and so we're walking around in our house, which is not our house. This is his house. And, and it says, while well, his house lies ruined, because we're not, we're not building. We're saying it's all built while we live sort of contrary to it in our religious way instead of the living way. We've come into a new and living way, a new, yes, but living. Jesus is alive. But we don't point to heaven. We, we're that house. So it says go up. In other words, go up into his heart. Go up into his reality. That's why we, we gather. We gather here to go up to his heart. We gather to, to see as he sees. And it's not seen in, in outward things. It's seen in the living reality of Christ. Chris, didn't you have a dream or something that was along this line recently? Or... Or what was it, Kelly? Could you come up here and just share that with us? Because the Lord gave that to you, not for you, but for us. <laughs> Uh, it was uh, it was during chapel. Um, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna share it with you the way that you know it came to my heart. Uh, it was a. It was like a, a gathering. You know, I mean, and this is this is a gathering. Um, a gathering where um, everyone was. You know, I, I want to say it this way. You know, there was. You know, there's going to be worship. There's going to be preaching, you know, sharing, time together, things, things of that nature, you know, just as there, there is here. Um, and it was not in this setting, though. It wasn't uh, here in this moment or anything like that. It was it, the, the way that the Lord put on my heart was that it was in heavenly places uh, and that everyone was was gathered in that way. And. Um, because you know that that 
that's the way that it, it can it can be and, and that's the way that it can feel um, but in the it, the way that the Lord shared it with my heart was is that you know there was this gathering and and all these things were going on and it was and it was all of those things but all of a sudden there was this uh, song there was this other song and it was like here here was this gathering and you know in in heavenly places and but then there was this other song playing and it was like well what's that song you know where's that coming from and uh you know you look off in the distance and I'm, again this is just the way that it was in my heart you know look off in the distance and there was this much larger gathering i'll say uh much much larger with everything you know just proceeding out and uh you know, it's like let's go over there. Let's <laughs> let's see what that is. <laughs> uh, and you know, it was like coming to just this large gathering and finding, you know, kind of finding your way through and drawing closer to what there is at the center, and coming to that center. You know, coming to where everything was coming out from, and there was. Jesus there was a slain lamb and in everything you know that that you know I I, the, I had these thoughts you know of uh, you know it, it could be well, you know who's gonna lead worship <laughs> you know who's 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 preaching after this kind of thing and it's like there's there's one there's just this one and you know everything everything coming out from him you know the the, the greatness of this one's heart the greatness yes. of this one just touching and affecting and and filling and you know pouring out of therefore um well that was, that was it <laughs> that's it <laughs> So this was reminding me of, of that, of, of go up, go to the mountain, go bring reality that's him. Go bring, hi, <laughs> go bring reality that's him, that is him down here into us. Go up and bring down real timber, not this flaky panel stuff, you know. <laughs> paneling, a house made of paneling. Some of you guys know the difference between timber and paneling. And build a house that I may take pleasure in it and be honored in it and am with you, so I am with you now. I am with you. And there is reality in Christ, but that reality is meant to fill the earth, us. It's meant to be built into us. It's meant, it's meant to be him. It's meant to be not truths. It's not meant to be doctrines. It's not meant to be stale. It's meant to be living what, what is living and what is what is alive in us, alive in us. You know, there's a difference even between something that's living and something that's alive in us because that's Jesus and that's the slain lamb and that's the reality that was and is and is to come and it is not temporal and it is not momentary. And so we gather and we gather, don't, we don't gather in Denton, we don't gather, we gather at his heart and we say, let your life, let your reality, let that which is you fill us. And we know, we know why we gather, though, don't we? We know, we know. And it's not, it's not first and foremost to put something in you. It is for our hearts to be knit with his heart together. 
because there are, um, you know, so many of you, I know that my heart is knit with you in the Lord. That that's, that's just the way it is. We didn't do that. <laughs> he did it. But it wasn't just, oh, look, two people are knit together. No. There's a heart between us. There's a life between us. Its name is Jesus. He's, he's a slaughtered lamb heart that draws us that pulls us, that we're not even motivated all the time by it. It pulls us to him. It, it brings us. And, and we, we know, and, there, and sometimes our words, we can't say it. We try to say it. We try to explain what it is we have, and we can't say it. But we know we know, and we know why. And so the Spirit of the Lord is, is here for one reason. Now, I know in churches people say, the Spirit of the Lord is here, and God's going to do great things. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit was come to declare him, to glorify him. And when your heart is not prepared, when your heart is not ready, guess what? His heart is. He's ready. And he'll do it. And if you're weighing everything by you, well, you know, look for handwriting to come on the wall. <laughs> you have been measured in the balance and found wanting. We want it written on our hearts. You know? And in many ways it is, but we're not satisfied. We want more, more of Jesus. And it's not an emotion, you know? It's not, it can cause us to be emotional, but it's not an emotion. It's from the Spirit, and it's from union with Him that moves us. And, and sometimes we break down and cry, but it may not be an emotion. It is just a, a love or a longing or uh, who cares? We don't need definitions for what God's doing. Amen. We just need to respond. Amen. We just need to respond. And, and uh, so, you know, everything here is not all planned out. And, uh, you know, I didn't know that Chris had seen that in, in chapel, but I knew that, you know, if Chris had seen something, I mean, I, I know his heart. And I know that what he shared wasn't just something separate from him. Like, well, I'm just a person, and then I see this, and then I'm this special person. <laughs> it wasn't. This is the Jesus that he's going after, you know. This is the one that he loves. He's pursuing his, his first love. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I want to I share, but I, I know that I'd shared part of this with the New Creation Fellowship before, but I never got to the, I was, I was kind of cut short, and I never got to the part that I felt like the Spirit of God wanted to fall on because he fell on it with me. And uh, so, so this morning, maybe just some preparation. But uh, some, since some of you have heard this, I believe that the Spirit of God is here now to breathe a little more on it. And um, this has to do with, uh, well, you can turn to Mark chapter 1. And I think uh, when I shared it last time, we called this, Prepare Ye the Way of the Lord. And as we prepared our hearts, we considered that it's, it's about him. It's not about us. Okay? We've heard that. Guess what? It's always about him. It's always about him. It's never really about us. Other than being some timber that he can live in, if you will. <laughs> but it's about him. 
And we've made it about everything but him. And we've made it about stuff for him, but we've not made it about him. We've made it about, uh, us, you know, who can, who can describe the mammoth thing that's been created that is religion? And may the Spirit of God, with a flood, wash that away in our hearts so that Christ alone is seen, like on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Mount of Transfiguration. And there's, there's Jesus. Yeah, there's Jesus. Oh, there's Moses. Oh, Moses. Oh, praise God. And there's Elijah. Oh, we got three good ones here. And the father is going, I don't want this to be, this is not the way this is meant to go. And he brings in a cloud and he overshadows everything but Jesus. How many of you want a cloud to start covering over everything else but Jesus? Yes. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So, yeah, we share a message, but, you know, you know what? Maybe this would be a good time. I don't even remember which one it was, but it's one of the sayings that we had that talked about you can paint and you can do all this stuff, but it's not really him. What? Uh, yes. This is really good. But this ain't it. <laughs> this is even better. This is what my mind is without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> a portrait of a happy couple can never transcend being one. Can I get amen on that one? <laughs> you can take a, you know, nowadays with cell phones, you can take pictures. You can go to special settings and, you know, the surroundings just serene and take a picture and argue all the way home after the picture. <laughs> is, that, is that possible? I know that it's possible because I know the people on this side of the room. <laughs> and this side. <laughs> and in the back. But me and Deb, we're perfect. <laughs> a portrait of a happy couple can never transcend being one. A painting of Jesus. And you know, I draw and I paint and I use chalk and I use pencil and all this kind of stuff. A painting of Jesus, no matter how wonderful, it can never fully grasp him. There's no way. There's no way. And maybe there can be something that touches our heart, but the fullness of him, no, I'm sorry, you can't do it. A sermon, though out from the highest revelation, can never communicate what his life can. See, that's why, and this is important, that's why coming here, you can't come here for the sermons or the worship. You have to come here for the Lord. You have to say, if you're sitting out there, you have to say, you have to say in your heart, Holy Spirit, you speak to me. You give me the real. You show me. You break forth in the real life of Christ. Or else if you don't, then you're going to go away and say, oh, that was really a good sermon. And it really changed my life. And two weeks later, how did that go? Right? It can happen. So it, it's a thing of the heart, your heart, going after his heart, being gathered here after his heart. Hallelujah. The greatest book I could write on Jesus falls far short of life. We must never set our course to gain the ideal of Christ, but the living reality that is him. Amen? Amen. So, and there's literature, there's literature over there. We're not deceived. That literature is just ink on white paper. If you don't pray and say, Lord, if you're in here, I want to find you. <laughs> you. You see what I'm saying? 
Even if it stirs you, we don't want to be stirred, you know? Kind of like James Bond, we want to be shaken, not stirred, but shaken. <laughs> Only some of you will get that one. <clears throat> The teaching concerning Christ crucified differs as far as a flower differs from the name of a flower. A rose. A beautiful rose. Well, saying it doesn't do anything. But the fragrance of Christ. The fragrance. We don't want to just say the name of Jesus. We want to breathe the fragrance that is Jesus. What is presently abstract and unclear to us must finally become the Word made flesh as a living, tangible Jesus. Lord, I seek you. Can I get an amen on that? That's why we're here. That's what we're here for. So pray over everything. You know, we pray over the food. We pray over the services. Pray over everything, every conversation, every moment that you can. Lord, I'm here for you. I'm really, I don't want to just talk about small things. I mean, I know that many of you don't know, never met one another. But, you know, my greatest desire, my, this is the honest truth, my greatest desire was that as you arrived, you would meet people that would just share, start sharing Jesus with you. And then maybe later you say, now who are you? <laughs> but you're just rejoicing. I mean, it's just filling you. It's just touching your heart. It's moving you. And you're saying, I want Jesus on the inside of you. You know, maybe somebody go running off to their room and just fall on their knees at their bed and say, Lord, I just want you. I don't want to have a good time at a gathering. I want to ga gather to your heart. So I'm asking you, I'm asking, I'm asking you, I'm asking you, pray for one another. Let somebody pray for you. You're saying, well, when the prayer time comes, no, I'm talking about somebody walking up to you or when you're eating and say, can I just pray for you? Can, you know, just standing together and pray. So let the Lord move us and let us, let us be more enthralled with him then what's going on around us? The things on earth growing strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Hallelujah. I'm not even going to get to what I'm sharing here, am I? <clears throat> um, so we're in Mark chapter 1. And I want to look first at verse 1 through 3. <clears throat> the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face. The messenger. This isn't any messenger. This is one that is sharing with you the, the, the reality, but not the life of it. Only the life of it is what we're after. Okay? And John the Baptist is going to be the messenger. But Jesus is going to be what we're after. Amen? I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Okay, so it... So he says, the beginning, this is the beginning, the beginning. It's here's how God wants it to begin. He's going to have a messenger, and that messenger is going to start saying, prepare the way for him. Get your heart, get all the stuff out of, your, out of the way, you know, stuff. Do you, do you all understand the word stuff? <laughs> Things, junk, you know. Get it all out of the way. Stop. Stop allowing it. Stop even promoting it. Stop having things that block you and Jesus and block the way to him. And the, and the messenger is just saying that. Let's, let's go to him. But you're having a hard time because you haven't made straight paths. Do you see that? You haven't made a straight path. You're still 
well, I want Jesus, but, you know, something else. And in verse 2, he says, as it is written, God sends us a messenger, and God also sends us as messengers. And we're going to deal with this, this thing of, of being a messenger as opposed to what the reality is supposed to bring us to. Just hearing a messenger is not enough. Just being a messenger is not enough. And he's preparing the way, and this has to come before we see his face. That's what he said. He's preparing the way before his face. See, well, what does that mean? Well, you know what it means, 2 Corinthians 3.18 that we are changed from glory to glory as we look into his face. As we look into his face, we are changed into that same image from one degree of glory to another. That's the, that's the goal. The goal isn't to know Jesus on paper. The goal isn't to know just Jesus as a savior in there. The goal is to see his face and that's where the change begins to come where it's no longer I, but Christ lives in me. He didn't say no longer I and Christ lives in heaven. And he lives up there with the best timber. No, he lives in us. Bring that down. Bring it down. Bring it down and make him a habitation here. Well, we're the church. Get off of all the doctrinal reality. Get a hungry heart for the living Christ. We say, well, I, would, you know, I wish I could be like David. He seemed to have a heart after God. That's because he always called him the living God. He never said, oh, I just want the, the, the God of Israel. I want the living. I want what lives, and I want it to live in me, and it's a him. And the specifics of that we probably won't get into this morning, but it grows. It's get, it gets better. Okay? <clears throat> verse, um, verse 6 and 7. Now, remember, he's, he's saying, pre we're pre here's what we're doing. We're preparing a way for the Lord. We're preparing a way to him and for him so that the messenger and the message begins to disappear. And it's just a him, the Lord, the Lamb. <clears throat> Verse 6, And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey and preach, saying, there cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Okay, well, the first thing that catches my eyes here is this, this outfit he's wearing. You think mine's bad. There, I, I have one difference about me today that you hardly ever see. What is it? I'm not wearing boots, I'm wearing shoes. <laughs> well, this guy wears camel hair, let's see, camel's hair, and with a girdle of skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey. I think next year that's what we're going to serve. <laughs> if it'll get us on the right track and get us going after Jesus. Are you ready for that? Your Thanksgiving meal is going to be locust and wild honey. <laughs> what? <laughs> locust tacos. <laughs> that actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> All right. So I've always wondered why he looked the way he did. You know, I mean, he's dressed in all this stuff. And he gives the answer in verse 7. And preach, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I think 
that he's so seen that what he's seeing is the Lord and he's getting that message from God and it's so real to him that he knows I'm not worthy and I'm not going to just try to look worthy and be worthy. I'm not going to go into the temple and preach. I'm not going to go. I'm going to go out here in the wilderness. And if anybody's hungry, come on. If you're hungry, then come. If you're not, stay in there with the religious people, you know. But he's got that message, and the message isn't him. And the message is the Lord. And more specifically, as we go here. So, and I like the wording here, uh, verse 7. And he preached, saying, he preached. What did he preach? There's, there's one mightier than me. There's one more important than me. There's one that we need more than just a good sermon out in the wilderness. And so what we're going to find is he's going to begin to just emphasize this. It's not about me. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy for it to be about me. And I'd mentioned to our folks, I said, it wasn't that he was unworthy. He, it wasn't that your goal is to go, I'm unworthy. I'm un the goal is to see yourself in light of him and go, I'm not worthy because he is so worthy. See? You don't have to. If you say, I'm unworthy, and it's only about how unworthy you are, then your focus isn't on him. Right? And you just beat your, oh, I'm not worthy to, to know him. You're not. None of us are. Thank God that's not what he's preaching. He's preaching him. Amen. But that, by saying that, I'm not worthy, that's the beginning of preparation. I'm not worthy. I want him. I'm not it. I want him. I'm not spiritual enough. I want him. Until it works in you, I am not, and he is, in a real way. So we, we fret about these things. We worry, oh, I want to come to that gathering, but everybody's going to be more spiritual than me. Probably, I know some of you. <laughs> <laughs> but that still doesn't matter. You know, you have to you have to put all of that. You have to you, you're like the woman with the issue of blood. You remember that story in the Bible? And she wants she's she's trying to get through to Jesus and she's fighting the crowds and she's going through and she goes, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. She's saying there's so much in him. Just the hem of his garment would completely change me. I got to get to him. But she's having to fight her way to get there. Sometimes the, all that, that, those people in the way are inside of us, you know. You ever heard of schizophrenia? <laughs> well, you're full of it. <laughs> and you have to fight all of that. Because, I mean, let's, let's admit this. Let's admit this. That this is, it is difficult to focus just on him. Really? Come on, it is. Okay, because I could prove this if, if I wanted to do this right now and just say, okay, everybody, just start talking directly to the Father and just pour your heart out on him. And I say, okay, we're going to do it for five minutes. I bet you a whole bunch of you very quickly would already think of other things just doing that. Has anybody been praying in advance of this and found that to be true? And you're just going, what is wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> but it really is true. We are easily distracted. And so, so John is saying, let's, let's make some straight paths. Let's make some straight paths. And that has to happen before you get to him. You're getting the message from John. It's about him. It's about him. But you still don't have him. You have to get some straight paths to him. And this is... This is part of the thing. We have to start with this, don't we? We don't have to. I mean, it is about him, but we're not going to get to him until we deal with you. <laughs> okay. 
So let the Spirit of God do what He wants to do. But our heart is still after Him. Amen? You see what I mean? It's not just fix me. It is, I want you, Lord, and do whatever you have to do to get me to, to Him. That has to be our spirit. <clears throat> so I wrote down as far as I'm not worthy because our, I am not worthy prepares the way for, for the Lord. This is what he's preaching. See, this is part of what he's preaching. He's not just preaching there's one that comes. He's preaching I'm not worthy. There's one coming. Okay. I'm not worthy to be invited. I'm not worthy that I should be prominent singing or this or that. Or I'm not worthy or important enough to be seen and heard. Can we just pray for the unworthy right now? <laughs> Father, we just pray right now that you'll use this not to, uh, not to, not to make us think that we're the issue, but that we want to be unworthy in the spirit of what you're trying to set forth here, that we're not the issue, <laughs> instead of that we're the issue. We're not the issue. And none of us are worthy. None of us are in a situation where we should think that we should do this or have that or be seen or heard. Father John... John the Baptist, when they came to him, continually pointed to your son. So, Father, help us to see that in the word here. Help us to get through this first part. In Jesus' name. Okay, let's look at verse 9, starting with verse 9. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in, in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. We always want the heavens open for us so we can see. But may the heavens be open so he can see the Father. May the Son within us be enthralled and, and captivated and drawn to the Father instead of looking around to minister to us. Amen? Amen. That it be truly about him. And if it's about him, let this thing, because that, that deal right there, that was all about Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There were a bunch of people around, but I don't think Jesus, if you said, hey, remember, you know, the disciples years later go, hey, remember when you went down in the Jordan and you got baptized, you know, wasn't that cool? Wasn't it cool how John, you know, looked and he took you down? Remember all the people? And he'd go, I don't, you know, really all I remember is my Father and the Spirit and us being together. See, they see differently than we do. They're more aware of one another. We tend to be more aware of ourselves. Well, I want the dove to come down on me. Where are you? Fall on me. You know, and we, we may do it because, you know, Lord, fall on me because I know that I'm spiritual. Or fall on me because I need help. How about just let it fall on him and Jesus enjoy everything? That, it, that out of this whole thing that he just enjoys that we gathered unto his heart and we just kept ourselves out of it. Amen. I also wrote, uh, uh, we want to we see him, we want him to see the heavens opened, not be stuck with being with us in the earth. In other words, us coming down here and bringing all of our earth garbage and going, here, Lord, you know, come down to the altar and just lay garbage, you know. All of our problems and all that. Lord, just deal with this. How about he just goes, 
I want to reveal my son. Hallelujah. Verse 11, And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. May the dove descend on him. May the father see his beloved son in us and be well pleased. In us and be well pleased. The son in us instead of us. Even instead of us for the son. I'm for the son. How about he just see the son in us and be well pleased and goes, yeah, now that, you know, that's what I want, he would say. Well, what do you see? One of the angels, well, what do you see, Father? I see my son, and I'm well pleased. <laughs> Praise God. In, uh, let's go to John chapter 1 now. And this is still John the Baptist and the things that are being said. John chapter 1 and verse, um, let's start with verse 19. And this is the record of John, whom the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? Who art thou? Okay, so here it it comes. Somebody starts preaching Christ. Christ. And people say, well, who do you think you are? Nobody. I'm not worthy. I'm not him. You understand what I mean? When you, you know, they want, well, what's your credentials? Uh, Unworthy? (laughs) And camel hair. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed. I like that it used the word confessed twice. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed. I'm not the Christ. I'm not Jesus. I'm not him. He's in me. But it's not about me. This is what John's saying. This, I'm, this isn't it. And they're going, oh, thank God. You look terrible, buddy. You know. I'm not it, and you're not it. None of us are it. So we all have to say and confess, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not it. You know, who art thou? Not me. Okay. But I, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. That which is in him is what I want, that which is him in him. Isn't that a good way of saying it? We say, I want, I want to be in him. How about I want the him of what is in him? Yes. I want him that's in him, that which is him. Instead of I want to be in Christ and have all this stuff, you know. It's not about who you are in Christ. It's about who Christ is that you happen to be in. Amen? So, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Verse 21, and they asked him, what then? Art thou Elias, meaning Elijah? And he said, I am not. I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he said, he answered, no. Are you that prophet? No. (laughs) See, they're going, speak up, say something. You know, declare yourself. Come on. Say more than I'm not. He is. He's what it's about. He's what I want. He's not, and at this stage, he's only his message. But we're going to see an incredible transformation take place in this process over the next couple of days where he moves, where where the whole scenario moves into a living reality. I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, no. (laughs) Then said they unto him, Who art thou? 
that we may give answer to them that sent us. Yeah, right. Like you're really wanting, you just want to, you, you want him to declare himself so that you can put him down. As long as he's pointing to Jesus, you go, look, this is, you're, you're like trying to nail jello to a tree. You know what I mean? Very difficult. Verse 22, then said they unto him, Art thou, uh, who art thou, that we may give answer unto them that sent us? What sayest thou, here it comes, of thyself? We preach not ourselves. It's not about us. Well, I'm a good Christian. Probably you're not. <laughs> Let's be real. You know. No, I go to church all the time. Okay, do you, do you meet with Jesus in your heart? Well, no, but I, I listen to sermons. I'm a good listener, you know, or a good sleeper during the sermon. John was not worthy, but he was called by God to preach another. That, that's an important point. Because usually when we feel we're unworthy, then we're not worthy to preach another or to worship, to lead a worship or whatever. I'm not worthy. But he was not worthy and yet called and knew that this is the one he was supposed to declare. He could have said it like this. I was born to preach Christ. I also was born to not preach myself or to seek higher status or to be something or to, you know, to build anything around that. Just let's just preach Christ. Praise God. I wrote down here. So the religious people ask, if you're not worthy, why are you being seen? I'm, I'm trying to let you meditate on that a little bit. Well, if you're not worthy, why are you being seen then? Somebody could have said that to him. Because I'm called to preach him. Now, again, it's going to be more than preaching him as we go. That's going to fade. But, but he knows this is what I live for. This is why I exist. That's why I do it. Not because I'm worthy. And if I'm seen, I'm only seen so that I can point to Jesus, to the Lamb of God. It's the only reason. That's it. So when they said, who art thou? What sayest thou of thyself? They're just basically saying, talk about yourself. Talk about yourself. Okay. Um, in many gatherings or conferences, people come together and they, they want you to, everybody wants you to talk about yourself. Who are you? Where are you from? What's, you know, what kind of ministry do you have? Wouldn't it be great if from now on as you met people, you didn't say, who are you? But, you know, you would just understand that they're here for Jesus and they want Jesus and they would be sorely disappointed if all they had to do was talk about themselves. Can you say, oh, me? I mean, amen. <laughs> All right, verse uh, 19. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. <clears throat> And if it's not about you, then who? 
from verse 23, and I'm going to just read verse 23 and 27, and then I think I will stop. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight paths to the Lord as said the prophet Isaiah. He it is who is coming after me. He is preferred before me, whose shoe latchet I am not worthy to unloose. He's, this is all the same. This is new stuff, new place in the scripture. <clears throat> and it is now getting into um, a, an important aspect he is declaring himself. Now, now listen to this. He's declaring himself to be the voice of one. What we're going to get into is we're going to deal with not the one, but the voice, being the voice. And I will tell you that God, one of the things God things God wants to deal with us during this time is that it's time for a transition. It's time for a major transition from being the voice of the one, Jesus, to what is about to transpire in these scriptures. From being the voice to the, well, I guess I'll have to hold off before I say that. Let's see. What time do we eat? 12.30. How about this? Um, if you would like some preparation prayer right now before we dismiss, would you just stand where we are and we'll just pray. And, and before you do that, <clears throat> not everybody is required to stand. Don't think that if I don't stand, they're going to think I'm not spiritual. They already know that. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. But a lot of times when people do that, then, they, then everybody says, oh, I've got to stand. We all got to stand. If the Lord's not speaking that to you right at this moment, or maybe, who knows, maybe you spent good time with the Lord before you got here and you're busting out all over, then don't stand. But if you feel like, a prayer at this point before we dismiss would be good and you would like to agree with it, then please stand with me. Okay. <clears throat> well, I thought she was saying it was over with. Okay. Uh, Kelly just reminded me of something, so sit back down. Y'all were really ready, weren't you? I'm serious. <laughs> Sit down. <clears throat> now you're going, please pray for me. <laughs> Why do you torture me this way? Uh, we have a song, and I believe that this song will put you in a mind a little more of, of being in that, uh, that place. So, Amy, if you'll come up, and Kelly, if you will, and get your guitar on so nice having Amy here uh, of course she's part of the fellowship but playing the cello the Lord really really uses um, that instrument to just f be the wings of the Holy Spirit So she plays it on her lap <laughs>
your heart to me and it was wonderful each and every hour you and me and in a land not yet sown still we would sing and how you laid there in my shadow through everything. And in the famine and the trial, you found hidden springs, lovers' things, lovers' things. I remember your love. I remember your love. I remember your first love. We lay there on the mountaintop. Your thoughts were like perfume. Your eyes, they somehow knew my deepest needs. And we lay in the rest of my love, I was your shade. And I would feed you there. The fruit was rare. But then you rose after them, calling them my name. You called them Baal and broke my heart. I cried every morning. You didn't hear. You left me and forgot the days I was near. And my kisses became a whisper on the wind. And my love became a memory now grown dim. And I am now just a story from the past. As you're filled with things besides me, I ask, what have I done? For you to leave me outside my front door, what have I done for you to not want me anymore? But I remember your love. Oh, I remember your love. I remember your first love. prayer stands. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness. And Father, with all of our lack and all of our lack of pursuing you, yet you pursue us and you draw us and you've drawn us here and we are, we are glad. We know that you have plans. You know, we know that this is not wasted time, that these are eternal moments, eternal moments where you can reach into our heart, eternal moments where things that could not shift and change are now able to be moved as your spirit continues to move on us and your sun is shining is seen to be shining brightly that's our desire that the sun or the sun of righteousness arise in our heart that the sun arise in our hearts 
So, Father, we, we believe in you. And some of us, we definitely don't believe in ourselves, so our hope is totally in you. And yet, what greater place to put our hope than in you? Father, bring forth your Son. Reveal your Son. Open our eyes and our hearts to see him that is. Him that is always the one. Him that will always be the one. So thank you. Thank you. Father, I just ask you to bless the rest of the gathering. Bless the food that we eat. Bless the fellowship. But most of all, may it all bless your son. We ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.